Skull and welcome back to Valkyrie's Art Corner. Today we're going to do something a little bit different. I have in front of me the Drifter Mask from the Fortnite game, which is quite popular. And this was part handmade, part 3D printed. So that noise you were hearing on the last video, that's exactly what this is. Now the reason why I say some of it's 3D printed, some of it's hand done, is because I had to print this off in sections uh, because it was so big. As you can tell from my hands, it's absolutely massive. Um, but I had to cut it off right here where the ears are and right here along the mouth. So I had to do a process what's called Bondo to um, seal it together and then sand it down and then primer it, which it turned gray because that, that's what the primer does. And then this is our base coat, which is a um, spray paint that I use. It was white gloss and it's uh, primer paint in one. So that way I know it still has a little bit of grooves in it and stuff. It, because I, I hand sanded it and everything like that, it's going to have a little bit of texture to it. So which that's perfectly fine. So that way um, I can start out with actually painting it. Um, so I didn't want to bore you with just like the primer and the base coat and everything like that and actually get into the nitty gritty of actually how to paint this thing. So, all right, just stay tuned for a little bit longer. It might take a little bit of time to get this painted, but you'll actually see the process of how this is done. Um, like, subscribe, comment, let me know if you like this video. If you'd like to see another mask to be printed and painted, definitely give me a shout out on that. I'll be more than happy to print it out and then get it going on it. Um, but yeah, let's get started. So as I said, it was gray first and then it was primered and then primer and paint in one so it helps smooth it out. So the drifter, just for picture reference, is he looks like that. So for those of you who don't know, that's what he looks like. So I'm going to reference this picture so that way I can get it as accurate as possible and that's what you want to do. So it shows on his face right here that he has grooves which are going to be painted the same way right here. So a lot of this is just it looks like just following the grooves. So the colors we're going to be using today and I'm a huge fan of Liquitex Mars Black. Um, it's a little bit more expensive brand they call it the professional paints which anyone at any age range or skill level can use these. I really prefer these over the like level one Liquitex because the level one Liquitex looks like this. Well, it's not Liquitex, but um, it's the Galleria Acry Acrylic White. It tends to be thinner and runnier, so whereas these are thicker and less opaque, which means see-through. So these are the ones I prefer. So we're going to be using the Mars Black. Um, the Deco Art Metallic Gold, um, this one was from Michaels, and I freaking love these paints, so they're amazing. And then the last color we're going to use is the System 3 Acrylic Fluorescent Pink. I couldn't find any fluorescent pink at Hobby Lobby or uh, Michaels, so I had to buy this from Walmart. So um, let's get started. So to start with... We will need, and I start off with the darkest colors first because those tend to smear into the other colors. Um, so we're going to start off with the black outlining of the jaw right here, and then the outline of his nose, and then the outline of the eyes. So that shouldn't take too long um, to do, and since I don't have my palette board, I'm going to actually use the table right here so that way and I'm using a number six brush it's just one of those ones that come out of like the basic art packs that you would find at Michaels um, I'm gonna be using a variety of brushes so that way um, I keep in mind I am NOT a sponsor of Michael it's just a place where I prefer to to do my shopping so we're gonna start out with doing the eyes and it looks like the way you would apply eyeliner so you come around just like this and get down into that crevice right there. So that way it'll look nice and cool. 
And applying eyeliner is not necessarily for girls. There's, I know a lot of guys that wear it and they wear it for costume. So it's actually a pretty nifty thing to learn how to do. So I highly recommend it to uh, learn how to do it because if you're into like costuming or anime, which is, if you don't know what anime is, it, it comes from Japan. And a lot of this, uh, the masks and stuff like that or drawings and stuff, if it's not from Disney, it's anime. And those, that's what I just prefer to watch. Um, but it's a really, really, really fun thing to learn. So we're just darkening this up and making it a little bit wider because that's how it shows. And with painting, it actually teaches you to have a very, very steady hand. And it teaches you patience because if you try to rush something like this, it's bound to fail <laughs> and you don't want that to happen. So we're gonna sharpen this off into an edge and then come back down and then color in the rest of his eye right here. Like I said, this one's gonna be a little bit longer but this is more of a, a how to, how to paint like a mask or something like that that's already been pre-printed. Um, so we wanna take our time with it, make it look good. Again, you just have to have a really, really steady hand. And if you mess up, since it's the base color is white, all you have to do is just let it dry just a little bit, and then you can go back in and uh, fix it. So it's not like it's a forever thing. Oh, no, I messed it up. No, you can always go back and fix it. Um, it's no big on it so uh, pardon me if you see my head I'm trying to get a little bit closer I just got a new tripod to help me keep my camera a little bit straighter instead of having to hold it with one hand so I can do more projects like this so I thank my husband for that he's fantastic okay and then I'm just gonna straighten this out a little bit more and there we go. And I gotta straighten this out a little bit because it dipped in just a little too much for me. And like I said, if, if you end up uh, wanting a mask like this, and want to paint along with me feel free to contact me and you can purchase this from me I can actually make it a smaller one so that way you can always go back and paint with me on the video which would be really really fun and I would love to see the results of that so please let me know if that would be something you'd want okay now we got to make this come down into a point because that's how it looks on his mask okay so now we have the right side of the eye done. Now we just need to go to the left, which will be a little bit of a challenge for me because I'm really good at doing one side and not so much the other. So bear with me on this. It'll be just like painting the other side. So I really, I still need practice on, on getting this down pat. And that's where practicing symmetry comes from. Um, so yeah, so we're just mimicking the other side, so far so good. And my son absolutely loves, loves Fortnite. I've seen him play it. I haven't played it personally, but I intend to sometime here soon, just to kind of see how, it, how it's all gonna run and everything. And I've seen the skins on there too, and they're absolutely gorgeous looking. So, and I could see the appeal of why people want to do something like that. So, okay, that's looking pretty good so far. All right, so now we'll draw that up a little bit, and now we will start on the top half. You'll want to get into the curves of the eyes, just like this. Well, you can see I'm spreading some black up there, but that's okay. I'll have black to cover it. So if you start with the inside first, where if you get little mistakes like that, um, you can always go back and paint over it again. Just let it dry. 
And then, here, I'm going to turn this mask a little bit this way because it will actually be easier for me to do it. Yeah, just uh, just let it dry, and then you can always go over it. Nothing's permanent. And it looks like I still missed a few things on the inside. And that's the fun thing with working with 3D prints instead of like a, a flat surface. Yeah, see, I messed up right there. Um is that you can actually get more involved with the object rather than just having to plan it out, draw it out. Whereas when it's 3D printed, you can print it out and actually see the object for what it is and work with it on a 3D basis. So, okay, time to come up and around with that. Just like that. Again, I do apologize if I don't talk so much. When I really get into doing something, I really get into it. So um, I'm doing my best to kind of instruct you on that and get things done. Um, but yeah, if you're looking for like basic starter stuff for like painting wise, like I said, my go-to is always uh, Michael's. Like I said, again, not a sponsor. Um, but that's just where I prefer to go because they have so far never led me astray when it came to my art supplies. Okay. There we go. Now I got that straight and I just need to make it a point right here to kind of land in. Just a little. And there we go. Let me just double check on the sides. No, nope, it needs to be a little bit straighter on this side. So, see what I mean about the symmetry? It's, it's something I really need to work on. Okay, so it looks like I got that straight now. Maybe. And paint that up and over. Now, what I'm going to do with this video is I'm going to release it as is, um, but I'm going to try working on time lapse so that way, if you would would rather not sit and watch the whole whole video, um, I would be more than happy to post a time lapse video. So that way, you can kind of speed it along if you don't have time to sit or, you know, just listen to me randomly talk that's perfectly fine so I will do that so now that we have his eyes done we still want to work with the black since we have black and we don't want to waste it Ooh, excuse me so now we'll want to go to his nose so what we're gonna do is paint down along this line right here because that's the the lines we're following and like I said with the 3d printed um, you actually can follow the lines and you don't have a flat surface you're going to work with. So, um, so we're going to draw his V right here and then loop around on top for his nose. So it's going to look like that. And then we want to do the other side right here. And come up here and then do a little loop for his nose. Again, if it's not perfect or if you don't like how it turns out, you can always, always go back and um, paint over it, make it look how you want it. And then come down here a little bit. Make this line a little thicker so it matches the other side. And then he has kind of like a, a triangular curve down here a little bit, so... I'm going to make that line up, make this side a little bit straighter, and with paints, they're a little bit unpredictable sometimes, so you want to um, 
try to be careful with them as much as possible. Because if it gets on your clothes, it'll tend to stain them. So just make sure you wear something that you really don't care about too much. Or, um, you know, just something you're willing to get dirty. And there's his nose. And now... I'm going to look at a different reference photo. Reference photos are very, very, very helpful in the long run. That way you can kind of look at them and see where the design goes. That way it's you get it down as perfect as possible. So it looks like this little line right here. I'm going to tilt this up so you can see it. It's like boxed off right here. We want to outline that in black. We don't want to go all the way around because that's not what the picture looks like. So, again, using my number six brush or, and also try to avoid touching paint because sometimes I have a really bad habit of doing that and it gets all over me, is we want to paint this in. Yeah, see, it's a little bit messy. I'll go back and touch that up with some white so that way it's, uh, it's more perfect and straight. So I'll come around like this. Come down where the fang is. And then after we start getting some of like the detailed stuff in, what I might do is make this a two-part video. So that way um, you can actually see how the process is done. So, because I know as soon as I start getting the detail paper pieces in, I'm not going to be able to touch it like I am. So what I'll do is I will... Stop the video after I get this done painted in let it dry and then go back into it again so might get two maybe three videos out of this so just bear with me just a little bit okay straighten that out if I can all right now we're gonna go underneath right here and just follow the curve of that line and coming up on here. Oh, I got a lot of touch up to do. And I'll do that in between videos. Um, I'll go back and touch it up so that way you can see how the, the lines look and everything like that. And just follow this down. And that's the thing is about being an artist. Don't strive to be a perfectionist because there is no such thing in, as perfection in art. So you can just throw that out the window. Try your best. If it's not the, if you don't think it's the best, you are your worst, worst critic. So you just got to learn to um, take it a little bit easier on yourself and be okay with making mistakes because if you don't make mistakes, you don't learn. Okay, so I got that. Oh no, I got some black on there. That's okay. It just rubs right off. Because the type of spray paint that I use, it's a high gloss, so it tends not to stick if it's still wet, but I can always go back over there and fix that. So now we'll come down here with the curve of his face. And come down here to the point. Just leave it right there. And then once I get this curve done, you can see what it looks like underneath. And if I get the colors wrong, I've seen pictures. Just let me know. I've seen pictures of where the drifter mask has red on it. I think it's just more so a preference, but correct me if I'm wrong. Like I said, I'm not a uh, Fortnite player, so I'm not too sure about it. But I'm just only going off for reference photos, so don't get bad at me, please. Okay, I'm just going to finish in this side right here. Okay, 
And then if it still looks a little bit gray in between, just uh, keep going back over with the same color until it gets darker. Or you can wait until it dries and then do a second coat. I tend to um, get a little bit impatient sometimes. So I've learned to do what's called a wet on wet technique. It's where you kind of just, you paint, leave it wet, and then still work on it. But yeah, that's the curve on the side of his face. Just like that, so as you can tell, it's starting to come together. And then you just pretty much repeat exactly the same thing over here. On this side. And then just try to touch it as much as you can. And the only disadvantage to dealing with a glossy white spray paint is that it does tend to um, make the paint slide around a little bit more, which is a little bit more difficult. So if you want to start out with just like a non-glossy paint and just work on it, like it's, it's what's called satin or matte. Um, it makes it less slick and it's a little bit easier to paint. So um, if you want to start out on that do it that way so that you won't have as much trouble so I'm gonna turn this up this way so I can see a little bit better of what I'm doing instead of trying to lean down in front of the camera and this is a whole new ballpark for me as well so like I said recently I just got into the world of 3d printing it's a fantastic thing unfortunately it still has not come down price wise so the average person um, it's it's still very very expensive I've been following 3d printing for quite some time and had to save up a whole lot of money to get my printer and my printer is fantastic um, if you want to learn how to do your do 3d printing I'd say and you want to learn how to build one start off with a do-it-yourself kit but make sure you do some research on it because there's some really bad kits out there took me three tries before I found the perfect do-it-yourself kit. So, um, yeah. Because sometimes it sends faulty software or it's not, it doesn't connect right or they send the wrong parts. So you want to find somebody who's a reputable source on um, 3D printers. And I got mine from Amazon. If you'd like to know more about my 3D printer, you can always ask and send me questions, you know. Um, well, you can already see the, the grade of how it prints. And mine can print a rather large size, which I'm very, very happy about, but it's still not big enough to print the whole print unless I make it super tiny. But other than that, I have not had any issues with my printer. Um... So yeah, that's all I can really, really, really say on that. And I do apologize if, if I'm boring you with the talking. It's just, it's just, it's really weird to sit here in silence. And then you just kind of blend that in. And let me check the sides on that. Just Tighten these lines up right here. And then I believe that is it on the black. So I'm just going to rinse this off real quick. And um, while that's drying, I'm going to, like again, Li Liquitex is my favorite go-to. So if you have like spots like this where you know it's going to show up um, through the paint because dark colors always have a horrible habit of showing up through the paint you just kind of go over it with the base color coat and just touch it up a little bit like that and if it still shows through let it dry add another layer and it's not like it's the end of the world especially because I do this all the time where I'll get paint on my fingers as you can tell right here and um, I'll accidentally touch a part that hasn't been painted yet and then I'll just leave these little black marks so you just got to kind of go through a little bit and just touch it up and make sure everything's good on it. And if you get like uh, on straight lines or anything like that, that's always 
always helpful to go back and straighten up your lines with that. Um, so now that we have all the black lining done, um, we need to move to the pink. So what I'll do is I will actually make one side of the face and get that done pink wise and in the video right there. And so that way you can kind of see how the design goes on this side. I'll work on the other side and then restart the video when I've got all pink on it. So that way we can go into how to do the gold design down the side of his face. So, and I'm kind of freehanding this. I know in my other videos, I'm like, follow your grid, follow your grid. But sometimes you just have to kind of like eyeball it a bit and kind of just go for it. So this is the fluorescent pink that I'm using, and it's really bright. Again, I don't know if the color is exact, but according to the picture that I'm following, um, it's pink. So that's what we're going to stick with. So, okay. Um, above the eyebrow, right about here, it's kind of a diamond shape a little bit. So it comes like about that far and then comes up. This is a really bright pink. I was not expecting. So seeing as pink is a little bit transparent or see-through, I'm going to have to add a couple layers to it to um, make sure it solids up. And that way it will look good. So as you can see right there, if I don't put a whole lot of pink to it, it's going to go very, very, very see-through. And that's the issue you'll kind of run in with paints. Unlike crayon, um, Paints tend to, they're, they tend to get a little bit see-through the lighter the color. So sometimes you have to mix them in with like a solid color like white or black to get them lighter or darker. But that can be a whole nother video on how to do color combinations. And then we just bring that together right there. And fill that in. And that's the outline right there for the marking above his head, on his eye. So it looks like it goes up a little bit more into a pointed thing, which is perfectly fine. Because then we can, like I said, we can, oh, I do apologize, I bumped the camera. Um, we can always go back and touch it up with the white. It, with white, it takes a couple layers, especially since it's a darker color. Um, it takes a couple layers to um, fully get rid of the undercoat, but it's well worth it if you want it to look nice. So that's just the basis of right there for that color. And then there is a side piece right here that looks like it goes up under his eye. Again, we got to kind of meet up with the black. And come down and then come up because this what this kind of looks like is what the Japanese have is kabuki masks if you want to look those up on a, on your free time go right ahead um, they use those for like shows and um, a lot of people use them as decor art which means just to hang them up around the house to, to make their house look a little bit more fancy I do apologize on if I've got that inaccurate, that's just what I know. I'll I'll do more research on it just to be just to be sure. And see what I'm doing is just kind of outlining where everything needs to be. It looks like it comes down farther. I'm making things a little smaller than they should be. And that's okay. It's better to make something like painting wise a little bit smaller than bigger because if you make it too big, I mean, you can still cover it up, but you can always add on to the smaller. And then I'm going to flip this out like this. This fluorescent is really, really light. And then it looks like on the mask, it has a little bit of pink that comes down on the front right here. So 
but we've got to kind of follow the outline. And see, it's okay if you get it on the black, because with the black, you can always go in and make it, make it darker again. So it's all right if you paint over it. And then I'll show you in the next video um, how that covers up. So we want to cover that. Make that. There we go. My brush has a little stray hair that I'm going to have to cut off. But it looks like I can go ahead and make it come down into a point. There we go. And we want to make this meet right here into the black. So that does that. And then there is this shape right over here where it kind of goes into an arch. And he has some really cool designs on here, so. So it looks like he's coming together now. So like I said, I'm going to just do this right side of the face and then I'm going to work on um, the other side of the face and then the ears in the next video where this is actually dry so I don't smear the paint everywhere. This one has a, a line that comes up just like this. Into a point, like a crescent moon. If you look up at night, sometimes you'll actually see the moon that looks like this. Fortunately for me, that one just rubbed right back into the paint, so I can go back and touch that up when I need to. Oh, sorry, I hit the camera again. I'm going to have to figure out a different spot to put that camera so I don't hit it as much. Just keep adding on to how you think it looks. Um, again, I'm painting a 3D object based off a 2D object, which is on the screen, and it's a character from a game. So, um, and then I actually need to make it a little bit longer because, it, according to the picture, the tips actually come very close to that golden design that comes in the middle. <laughs> 